Hello, it's Lee here. Thanks for joining me again. And welcome to any, any new viewers who might be here for the first time. Hope you like what you see, hope you enjoy the video, and that you'll uh, subscribe to the channel. Alrighty, we're doing Junk Journal January. This is hosted by Meg Journals in collaboration with Get Messy Art. So Junk Journal January is a great opportunity for you to get in the habit of doing something every day in your junk journal or your art journal or your journal or on your notebook or wherever you um, might be putting your thoughts and ideas down. I am using my junk journal as an art journal so I'm wanting to keep everything light and bright and cheery and fun it's just not as bright and cheerful as these other ones. Don't you just love that? This one, mixed reaction to that. <laughs> I had a lot of fun doing it though. Melted crayons for the first time. It's a negative space painting. It was yesterday. It was layered so uh, that was a lot of fun to do and I really like this. And I couldn't remember who this woman was and I thought she was from 1922 but the photo was from 1934 and her name is Dorothy Lamour. So Dorothy Lamour from 1934. That's how I remembered it once I found it again in the book. Now remember yesterday I think it was maybe the day before I talked about how I thought I'd put the wrong colour red on my palette. Well that was the original one and then I realised that I had actually added a different red on there by mistake when I topped it up. So there's quite a difference in the colour. Let's bring it up a bit closer. So that's the original. That's the one that I topped it up with. And I have added some more of this onto the palette. So eclectic is a mixture of things coming from all different places or something that is bohemian in that you might have one style. I'll say it's furniture. You might have one style of lounge, a different style chair, and then a different style of lampshade. Or you might be um, have something purple and something red and something gold in your room. So basically it's just a mix, it just mixed, you know, like a variety of things, which I think to a certain extent we all do anyway. Well, I, I think I do. Okay, so it could be boho, it could be just a mixture of stuff, it could be anything. So I want to firstly, um, just to put in, to create some texture, some papers. And I do want to seal that edge up today because I've, oh sorry, I've been forgetting to do that. And um, There might be a little bit of moisture involved with today's project, so probably best to seal up the spine so that we can't get the seepage happening. It's almost a shame to cover that up. I love that stencil. It's um, a mandala. Okay, so that's just plain old masking tape. It's perfect. It's great, actually great to use in your artwork. It's so versatile, you can paint over it and you can stamp on it. It's transparent, so you can put it over the top of stuff. You know, like you might stamp some writing or something onto your page and then you can just put a piece of that over it and you can still see it. So, really, really good. Let's just turn that up on the other side there. It's the easiest way to do that. Okay, I'm going to stick down a couple of bits of paper, maybe some book page. So how's everyone going? Are you all um, managing to keep up with everybody's videos? I know I'm, I'm struggling to watch my YouTube friends on seeing what they do. Uh, it's easy for me to watch them on the television, but I can't leave a comment there, so I have to remember to go back in and... Um, leave comments so I uh, don't think I'm ignoring you because I'm not okay 
I'm just going to apply this with this uh, paint knife, spatula. I'm waiting for a parcel to turn up. I, um, I lashed out and I bought myself one of those, you know, the Tim Holtz glass palette thing. Matte. Crafting mat, <laughs> that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, I've, I've been wanting to have one for ages and ages. Really, really wanted one. And then I saw them on special somewhere. So I ordered myself one. It's either a late Christmas present or an early Christmas present. Yeah, so I was trying to put off doing this video until it turned up. I cleared my desk off and everything ready for it. I've had emails saying it's going to be delivered today, but the only thing wrong with it is if it, um, it's one of those ones you've got to have a signature for. And if no one's there to provide a signature, they take it to the post office, which means they're then going to get in the car and go and get it. So I've been hanging around. The house all day like a bad smell, waiting for it. Most of this will be covered up. But every now and then you will see bits of it peeping through. And I'll be putting over um, a layer of white, uh, clear gesso anyway, so that None of the wet medium that goes on top is going to interfere with this paper. Did I say I'm going to leave the the serviette, um, the doily? I'm going to leave it to a bit later on. I reckon I've just about got enough of this stuff on there. I might save that. I might need that for later. I had to use a bit of paper yesterday my stickers that weren't printed squarely and they hadn't been cut properly, put it that way. It was annoying. Okay, there. Gets rid of the last little bit of that. Okay, we go up there. Oh, here's a bit more. Might as well use it. I hope the lighting's not too bad because oh, it helps to be in frame too, doesn't it? Um, it's a bit cloudy at the moment. It's just started to sprinkle with rain. And oh, we have a thunderstorm apparently on the way. Okay, so now I'm going to add the clear gesso. I had this stuff for so long and I never used to use it unless there was someone else using it and I thought well that's a really good idea I should start using mine so you buy all these things and don't you just put them in the cupboard you use them for a little while and then it's like the next best thing comes along and off you go chasing that so um, yeah I'm happy to get this out and use it. So this paper here is only co copy paper that's been coffee dyed. So all I did was put stencils down on it and then sprayed coffee all over it. So it went through the stencils. Um, yeah, so there's nothing special there. They... So it's not a really good paper. On this side I've got a piece of um, mixed media paper this one Oops. Um, I'm scraping this because I want it to be just a really thin layer I want it to dry quickly I don't want to be waiting around I do have the overhead fan on so it should dry out pretty quick and I can work over the top of it when it's still a bit damp anyway okay, just make sure that's not sticking to the other page Alrighty. Okay. I 
suppose I could always make some colours up, couldn't I? So I've got a few colours, nice vibrant colours there to play with. First thing I want to do is just add, scrape a little bit of um, white gesso onto here. Okay. So I'm going to start adding on some colours now. Got my colours on my board and I'm going to use a big brush this time. So I think I'm going to start with, I've got a bit of water in my brush so I should be able to spread that and make it a fairly thin coat that's going to show what's underneath, I'm hoping. Leave that one alone for the time being and go for the purple. It's actually more of a mauve, isn't it? A bit of white. Oh, I know what I can use. I have some clear painting medium and it's for adding to your paint to make the paint really thin so you can make it into a glaze. So I'm just going to pour a bit in there. This is something else I found when I was looking for something else. Hidden away in the cupboard. Oh, that's horrible. Should have wiped that off. What I'm going to do while this is still wet is just get my catalyst wedge. Oh, yeah. Spread some of that around. Remove some of it. So I like what happens when you do that. Do you have a little bit of this dark colour that I mixed the other day? I'm just going to put. A little bit of that on, just for a bit of contrast, a bit of dynamic. So I'm just going to keep playing with this and adding marks and colours on there. Um, I've got a piece of this that I thought I could use as a stamp. Let's see how it goes. Would have been alright but there's a big blob of paint there. Yeah, that looks quite good. Just wipe that away. I feel like I want to put some more of this um, turquoise colour in there. got the glazing medium in it so you can see the the writing through through the paint what about a bit of this greenier color if I let it dry. 
I might dry that layer and then come back and add some more. So I'm going to just put a little bit more white gesso over that or maybe I got zinc white which is transparent white. Maybe I should do that. Right, I'm going to glue on a couple of pieces of this. And we're about to do a Doctor Who and jump in the TARDIS and time travel about I'd say about 15 minutes into the future because some dum-dum forgot to press the record button. And in the blink of an eye, hey presto, look what's happened. Yes, I've added quite a bit since I um, actually t uh, turned the camera off before. All I did was um, add some of that medium, so the the uh, clear painting medium, to the paints and put over some clear washes of yellow, orange and red. And I'm just doing a bit of mark making now. So I thought some of these green squares would look nice up there and while I'm at it, some blue ones. So this is just completely intuitive what I'm doing. The only thing that there was any planning stage for was the actual collaging and you know the prepping of the paper with the gesso, that sort of thing at the beginning. But the rest of it, um, I'm just making it up as I go along. So I've made like a dark brown out of those paints and I'm making those little circles there. And apparently I like to make trails because I do a couple of them in this particular piece of work. So um, I think when you do that you tend to start at one end and look to the, you know, when the painting's finished I'm talking about, it leads your eye across the, um, the painting. When my husband looked at this, he thought it was an abstract farm scene because later on I put um, like a line through those little green marks that I just put in there and he thought it looked like a fence and then the brown circles looked like trees. So <laughs> that was his, his story. He says, oh, he likes to look at them and make up a story to go with them. Um, yeah, so I said, well, you can make up any story you like. So that little implement there is a stamp for pushing impressions into clay with. And this piece here, well that's just a piece of rubber matting, you know, they put it that you put in your drawer to stop your bits and bobs from flying around every time you open and shut the drawer. And here's my favorite little bubbly stamp. Couldn't um not use that. I think I loaded up with some black now so, and it'll be black gesso. Yeah just to add a little bit of um, contrast in there. If you haven't tried making something in this style, I wholeheartedly recommend that you do it. Uh, have a go. Like It's, it's so much fun. Um, the worst thing that can happen is you don't like it, in which case you just paint over it with some gesso or some other sort of paint and do something else on the page or if you really really don't like it you screw it up and you put it in the bin if it's not in a book well I suppose you could tear it out of the book and put it in the bin couldn't you oh, 
like since I started doing this but this is number 11 um, I just feel like I've been doing this sort of thing forever it's so enjoyable I absolutely love it um, I hope everyone else likes it too and I'm, I'm sort of not looking forward to the month ending because that'll be the end of this particular journal so I'm gonna have to make myself another one and um, keep on art journaling so those dots I just used a pencil dipped it in some paint and put some dots on the page so you can just use anything you you can get your hands on to make marks see all these colors work really well together because they were all mixed from the same three colors the yellow that's in the green is the same yellow that's in the orange and the blue that's in the green is the same blue that's in the turquoise oh, you know like the bluey bits of it so everything is harmonious because it all came from the same three colors so even that brown is made by mixing the turquoise the red and the yellow together so uh, yeah so everything works well there we go with some more trails that's a black stabilo that I'm using there um, something you need to do at some stages of this is to dry it you know in between layers otherwise you'll end up with mud which I have got in a couple of places and that's only because I was trying to rush it through um, yeah I was you know I just wanted to get it done filmed and uh, yeah, get it out of the way but I was still enjoying myself so I'm adding a bit of gold paint here I give up with the spatula thing and end up using my finger I think on this oh no I'm using the end of the pencil again oh there we go there's the finger brush it's not a real good gold that one it's called antique gold and it's got quite a green sort of tinge to it so uh, it's not vibrant like the one that I used to make my splashes with watercolour from. I'm actually thinking of removing the signatures in this book and replacing those pages that are the copy paper sewn together with watercolour paper. I do have some big sheets of watercolour paper. Um, what I'm finding is happening it's not so obvious on this one but it was on the one that I did with the lady the magazine uh, like the magazine image the paper gets really wrinkly because I didn't I didn't glue the pages together I just stitched them together so they're really only one layer thick and uh, yes yeah, so they're very affected by the wet medium but you live and learn don't you and I'm finished this signature now I think this is the last page in it so it's very easy for me to take out the remaining two signatures and just add in some of the watercolour paper. And that tube is like from a paper towel roll or cling film roll so no money spent on that to create a great make make marking mark making tool so this is where I'm just knocking back a couple of those areas where I think there's just a bit too much going on there uh, creating some quiet places on the painting somewhere to to rest your eye before you're bombarded by the next explosion of color I guess
So this is where um, I put in these extra marks along here and then I run a line through it and that's what my husband thought it looked like a fence on a farm in front of trees made out of circles created by a paper tube. So I'm just using that knife now to uh, uh, calm down a little bit, uh, quieten down a little bit of busy areas again. Just oh, and I couldn't work out when I was looking at that how I made those marks. I know it's just the, from the edge of this palette knife. If I hold it on its point, it makes those funny funny marks. I'm using the unevenness of that paper, the wrinkles that are in it, to get that patchy paint on there with that knife. So I'm using a little bit more pressure on this bit, but on the other side, and before I did that, it was just um, a light touch of the palette knife over the bumpy paper. I love to do this black edging around the pages now. It's um, become quite addictive. I think it just finishes everything off just perfectly. It's not the last thing I do on this page though, so don't don't stop watching. Keep going. <laughs> I'm, I don't put the pen the uh, crayon down, but um, yes, yeah, so I'm going to doodle a couple of flowers on here. So just a couple of rough shapes. I just felt that it needed um, something else in there, something more structured, as in you look at it and you know exactly what it is. So I drew in five flowers, because you can't have four. You have to have, uh, what is it, either one, two, three, five or eight. It's called Fibonacci's sequence. So you start with one and you add two, so you get three, then you add two and three together to get five, and then five and three to get eight. So then you would add five and eight together to get 13. So you never use any number that doesn't come up in that sequence. So what I do is I, after I've drawn the flowers, I just, with my finger, Fingler. I've got five fingers on each hand. <laughs> okay, so with my finger, after I wet the stabilo and get that moving, I just um, roughly colour in the petals of the flowers. Uh, and I do mean roughly, like over the lines not filling in the space, all that sort of thing. So I wanted it to be really organic looking and to maybe look like a child had done it. So a certain naivety about it. So there we go, using the finger brush to do that. So I don't care whether I color in the whole space. I did think about leaving the little flowers um, transparent, but I changed my mind because it's okay to change your mind. So I hope you've really enjoyed this because I had so much fun making it. I can't, I can't express how much fun it was to make. So let me know in the comments what you think and don't forget to hit the subscribe button. If you're not already subscribed, give me a thumbs up and I'll see you tomorrow for Torn Edges. Okay, have fun creating. Hugs and cheers from Australia. Hooroo!